haven't been in the office for weeks. Is there anything you need to tell me? Here you sit, looking to extort money out of a drug cartel lieutenant. From his wife. Five million dollars in cash, which has seemingly disappeared. They want it all back. Funny that the mark just happens to be your girlfriend. Once you collected, what was the play, huh? I sacrificed five years of hard time, and this is how you pay me back. You owe us a very large debt. I'm here to collect it. Yeah, Jeffrey. Hey, good morning. Alex, good morning. Mariana, Jeff in Las Vegas. Oh. Wow, you've got like the full AI technology behind you with my face very prominent. <laughs> Alex, we got to do this junket style, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, thank you both for joining me today to talk about collection. Uh, what an intriguing drama. I mean, everybody I've can... Actually, I, I, I've actually got to take a photo of this. Take a picture sorry. because it looks so I, good. It looks so yeah. good. I love the color wheel of this movie. Oh, yeah, I do too. Color themes really are beautiful. Yeah, it's very cinematic. I'm actually, I'm actually videoing. So. Oh, you're videoing it. Okay, it's so I'm cinematic. Honored. This, this, this you're is in definitely the, going on the. Inside. It's almost like you're in the world. <laughs> hey, you're in you know, the world for a movie. I got to tell you something real quick too, Alex. You know, back when you did Alex Ryder, you know, once upon a time, uh, yeah. if you look on the DVD cover, I'm quoted on the cover on the bottom. That's my quote. So I, no. I always. I'm always proud to say that when I interview you, like, you know, I have all the quotes in the world for that film. I'm on the bottom of it. And you could only find that at Walmart. And I got like five copies in my collection. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, love well, I appreciate that. Thank my you. pleasure. Oh, my gosh. Uh, look at that. Uh, I need an agent now, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you both for joining me today to talk about collection. Uh, what an intriguing drama. I think everyone can relate to this, this movie because we've all had debt collectors at our feet before you know i know back in my 20s and 30s oof, i had some really bad time. so i was watching this movie and hearing these phone calls man it brought back a lot of bad memories but you know alex brandon runs a successful debt collection agency boiler room atmosphere but he has alternative methods to collect his debts doesn't he uh, <laughs> <laughs> loaded yeah. question <laughs> yeah it is a loaded question yes he he has uh interesting methods which i think um the writer which i will put that loaded question onto him todd um has dealt with many a uh, true story um uh he's uh, actually a, a defense lawyer um who who um had kind of dived into this world a bit but i think that um these unique methods in the way that brandon collects is due to his um, unfortunate past that he's dealing with. You know, he's dealing with a lot of trauma and a lot of loss. And I think that he has um, become numb to his uh, emotional sensibility, shall I say. And because of that, uh, he does things in maybe the, not the most political ways. Um, but uh, yeah. That's it. It's funny because, you know, his character, Brandon's character, I noticed from right off the entire movie, turtlenecks and gold chains, <laughs> you know, You're welcome. And I was just like, wow, that really shows his character, this slimy kind of guy that wears the, the turtleneck. And I thought, OK, in the courtroom, that's the first time. But throughout the whole movie, you know, he's wearing the gold chains. I was like, man, count your fingers when you shake this guy's hand. <laughs> yeah. I say that yeah. to the costume designer. I said he's wearing a gold chain the whole film, and it's also really cinematic to shoot a gold chain. And Alex is gonna look really good in any jewelry you put him in, but especially gold works with him. So it's it good. did. And uh, Mariana, uh, you know, uh, Shakira Barrera plays a single mom, husband serving hard time, making ends meet, car repoed. Her performance was electric. Where did you find her? Well, Shakira and I are basically family. We did GLOW together. We did GLOW Netflix. Um, we wrestled each other on GLOW. I knew she was from Nicaragua and I wanted to hire her to do it because I knew that she had this dance background. I knew that Alex and Shakira would have a really easy way of working together, which is what we wanted. I think that she brought so much authenticity to it and passion and just you know truth and every time they were on the screen together I still get goosebumps thinking about it but it's not the normal goosebumps it's actually goosebumps all over I get goosebumps on the underside of everything like this is a lot it's a lot of potent wonderful 
creative people coming together to make a beautiful film and performances are so exceptional. Yeah, every every so every glad. scene she had, she had this ridiculous energy. You know, she never yeah. was passive. She was always because her life was just constantly in turmoil. You know, uh, and speaking yeah. of turmoil, yeah. you know, Alex uh, Brandon takes a shine to a young felon, Sean. What does he see in him? Played by Jack uh, Korean. <laughs> <laughs> I think he sees uh, naivety, and I think he sees uh, youth, and uh, I think he sees wide-eyed and kind of uh, someone that hasn't potentially been corrupt by either his own emotional undoing or um, or been corrupt by you know a corporate doing. Um, and uh, through that naivety, I think there's a little bit of a sensibility to a clean slate. But um, actually, that is derived into something different for Brandon because um, he falls in love. And uh, that escapism that he might have been looking for uh, through a new project, you know, in finding a new recruit, um, he finds by meeting this beautiful woman that is also dealing with a lot of um, hardship and um, falling in love softens the the heart and changes the psyche you know um, and when that happens um, how you view your world completely changes unfortunately for Brandon he's still stuck in the same environment and having to deal with that same environment while falling in love and understanding there's a different path for him um, is a really that that dual that duality I think really creates um, quite a cinematic experience. But with Brandon falling in love and with uh, the putting Sean under his wing, uh, Mariana, wouldn't you say that's where the dissolving trust between the brothers began? Definitely, I think that he has to sort of pick his lane. We talked about the fact that it was Romeo and Juliet, but just in modern America, you know, and we got to shoot it in Alabama and. Mike Vogel is, you know, we're like, there's, there's Capulets and there's Montagues and you can see all the pressure, you know, it's really, really unbelievable that, um, that when love does happen for people, it sparks in this moment and it's not usually convenient, you know, it doesn't happen in a way that you imagine it would. And I'm, and I'm certain that everyone gets helped and healed when two people fall in love. And so it does rupture his community and his, his sense of self changes. And it's amazing to see that, you know what I mean? <laughs> And yeah, it, you can't take your eyes off it. The film is so specific about that. Yeah, that's the meaning of the, it's the point of the whole movie. And so you kind of can't stop watching it, you know? I found, out, I, I found out what the reason press junkets are for. And if, I think if other people had the same idea, I think, I think that press junkets would be uh, revered as the greatest gift because <laughs> A press junket for an actor, not for a company, but for an actor, is almost a way of like reviewing the film through their experience. Because what you have to understand uh, is when you are in the film, your experience is completely different than the person that is viewing the film and their interpretation of what you've made. A lot of people don't actually, they watch their film after and they watch it once and it's very hard to watch and kind of mm. step away. And you know, what I realize as I get older, it's so interesting to talk to people like you who have such incredible questions and very specific questions. And you kind of like are looking back almost as a thesis of like, oh, okay, yeah, this angle, this angle of what this emotion and this journey for that person is. You know, I, I, well, I actually find myself watching a lot of Tarantino and, and, and uh, uh, Charlie Rose now doing all the interviews with, Scorsese and, and mm. uh, Viggo Morrison and, and those guys talking about their, their careers and their characters and actually GQ now are doing a lot of these and Vanity Fair are doing right. a lot of the exposés on, on, mm. on actors and their characters throughout their careers. And I, I find it so uh, compelling with the I'll tell you the there. difference, Alex, is that there's a difference when someone speaks to you that's a film critic like myself or entertainment yeah. reporter. There's a big yeah. difference. An entertainment reporter shows up for an assignment ask you what's your character like and all like that a critic watches the movie notices the direction the lighting the everything the aesthetics but it, but it's, it's different but, but it is very different but you yeah. know it, it's so interesting that that a film critic has an, an opinion whether it's positive or negative it's an opinion you know but the opinion comes with 
knowledge, knowledge of sitting, watching, experiencing. We all go to museums and we all stand in front of the same picture. Let's call it the Mona Lisa. And we all have a different interpretation of what that is for us emotionally. Some people are in awe. Some people are brought to tears. Some people look at it and what is this and move on. And, but it's the, it's, it's the indulging in the creativity of understanding what those people went through to create that, you know, um, that's what I really appreciate. And I think that, I think film junkets should just be for film critics. <laughs> to quite fair. We, we would agree. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll finish with my last question, Alex, you know, cause Brandon has a choice, love yes. and happiness or his biggest score yet. And what do you think? Why is, is he torn between that or is love going to win out? Um, I'm trying not to give away anything. In the That's moment. right. Yeah. No spoilers. I'm just, okay. But, well, I'll just leave it at that. You know, <laughs> no, no, I'll, I'll answer in a moment. You wanna, okay. Redemption and love are two very different things. And people believe that redemption can come through love and it can, but redemption for your own personal journey can be, eradicated through love because love is a new beginning but um in our circumstance or in many circumstances in reality and in cinema verse sometimes those are distorted and i think that is what an interesting choice that he has to make at the end well what an excellent drama congratulations to both of you thank you for joining me today and when you have a chance come visit us in las vegas we'd love to have you <laughs> Oh, yes. thanks, Jeff. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, my friend. Take care and good luck with the film. Oh, thank you.